Righto, tally ho. Now, I want to talk about my experience with this MacBook Pro when I was overseas and why when I come home I kiss my XPS 15. Now, this is a great laptop. Don't get me wrong, I'm not Mac bashing here. It got bashed and crashed. It held up well overseas and I highly regard this laptop. Now, I do have a video on the best 13-inch laptop. Check out that video and you will see maybe this actually wins best 13 inch laptop just i'm not going to tell you who the winner of that shootout is but um this is in my top three 13 inch laptops so i do like it i'm not here to bash this and actually here i've got a dell all-in-one here that i'm reviewing i thought all-in-one sucked it's actually not a bad one here so I will start off with the biggest tip I can give you. Actually, I'm filming with the iPhone 8 here, 60 frames per second. It might struggle a bit in this lighting because it's not very bright in here. But anyway, the best tip I can give you, if you're interested in this 13-inch MacBook Pro, and even this one, or the touch bar, or even the 15-inch, do not upgrade the processor. Generally, do not upgrade the processor. Now, when I reviewed this, I made a mini review of this. You can check that out. I'll leave the links in the description. I had the 8GB RAM model and it had the i5 in it, okay? Now, this one here, as you can see, I've got to blur out that serial number now. Um, it does have 16 gigs RAM and it has an i7 in it, okay? Now, I thought, well, if I'm going to be using Final Cut and I'm going to be doing a little bit of video editing on this, um, maybe if I put 16 gigs RAM and I upgrade to an i7, I'll, you know, get a bit better performance. And in fact, it's not true. It performs pretty much identical to the i5 and the 8 gig model in my experience. I mean, obviously, if I loaded a bigger project that used more RAM, I would get some benefit out of the 16 gig. When it comes to the processing department, the CPU you get, don't bother upgrading from the i5 to the i7 because these will throttle in the touch bar version or even in this one they actually throttle they get hot and from my tests i've done like four tests and basically only one test was this faster than the actual i5 in final cut in handbrake um, what else did i test premiere and there was another test i can't remember but anyway only one of the tests it was actually faster than the i5 model so and in a couple of tests, it was actually slower. So it was throttling, obviously, because the i7 does get hotter than the i5. It's nearly five to 10 degrees hotter. So do not upgrade the CPU in these Macs. That is the best tip I can give you. Anyway, so why did I kiss my XPS 15 when I come back? And I'll tell you some of the issues. Now we were in Italy, so the internet wasn't great down there. And also, we were in hotels day to day, like swapping hotels, living from a suitcase, and that's why I took this with me. Now, I could have just bought an XPS 13, but I've already reviewed that, I thought, for diversity's sake. And because this is a good 13-inch laptop, I thought, I'm going to use the MacBook Pro. Go overseas, I'll get the tax back on it, get it a little bit cheaper, win, win, win. Now, it was great for the most part, but I'll just tell you some of the issues I had with it when I was overseas. Now, usually I would take my XPS 15 with me, but I knew I was only gonna edit videos here and there, and I wasn't gonna do anything heavy duty. I thought, well, this has Final Cut, so I'll be able to render out those H.264 files or videos really quickly, because Final Cut renders out those things very fast. And it turns out, it was my big mistake because, and the mistake was, well, I had three phones while I was with me. I had the Mi Max, do I have that around? No, I don't. I had the Xiaomi Mi Max. I had this one here, the Umi Digi Z Pro or whatever it is. It's actually not a bad phone. And I also had the iPhone 8. Now, I filmed a lot of things in Italy with this because it does have a decent camera. So I put the files on the Mac and yeah. What happens? This records in HEVC, so it records H.265. Final Cut wouldn't recognize it. The Mac wouldn't play it. It's like, what the hell is going on? And I'm like, okay. So I had Premiere Pro on here. Anyway, so Premiere Pro recognizes it and it will work. So I had to use Premiere Pro. So the advantages I thought I had with using Final Cut Pro, being able to render out 
H.264 files fast because it supports quick sync. Well, that advantage is gone. I had to use Premiere Pro because Final Cut did not recognize it. The whole Mac system did not recognize the high efficiency mode or the HEVC H.264, 265, sorry. Now, with the High Sierra update, it actually does support it, but still, I don't know why, but Final Cut Pro will not recognize files from this phone, even though it is H.265. It'll recognize them from the iPhone, but not from anything else. So that was the first problem. Anyway, second problem was I recorded with this mic here, and this mic here is a very good mic for what it is. It's a very portable mic, it's awesome. But when I plug this into this dongle here and then put it into the Mac, the amount of noise it has is unbelievable. If I plug this straight into normal USB, into an XPS 15, the noise isn't that bad. But when I plug it into this dongle here, the noise just gets exponentially worse. In fact, so much so that it's not even worth using the audio out of it. Now you might think, well, maybe this dongle's faulty or whatever, but I actually plugged this into the XPS 15 and done the same thing, and the noise wasn't there. So I don't know what it is, if the Mac just doesn't like this mic or the Mac doesn't like the combination of this dongle here and the Mac together. I don't know what it is, but there again, I had unusable audio with this Samsung Go mic. So that was another problem. Another issue was uh, that I had, um, and this is to do with dongles on it, and this dongle thing has been done to death, but yeah, I had to print out some tickets. We were going to a football match, so had to print out some tickets. So all I wanted to do is, is put my tickets on a USB stick and then print it out at a Photoshop or whatever so I could uh, use the tickets at the ground. So I misplaced the dongle. I'm like, ah, come on. All I want to do is put the files on a USB and then print them out at the print shop. But because I misplaced this dongle, it actually took me half an hour to find the thing. And what I realized is that this not having a USB it virtually makes this device useless if you don't have a dongle. It's virtually useless. You cannot do anything. You can't connect anything to it. And it's just that USB-C is only slowly being adopted. And I think it's going to be another five years at least until, you know, every USB stick is USB-C or every device is USB-C. It's going to be a long time. Now, all these things are like little issues, right? But when you're away on a holiday and just these little things add up and it just makes you tear your hair out and you just want things to be easy. You're tired, you're going from place to place, you're carrying luggage and then you just want things to work and it's just like all these things really annoyed me and if I had my XPS 15 or if I had an XPS 13, all those problems wouldn't have existed. Um, so as much as I like this laptop, it is beautiful. It took a beating when it was overseas and survived that. And it's a great laptop. They're just little quirks that just annoy me. And anyway, that's just my thoughts and what happened when I was overseas. I'm sure there's other little things that I forgot that annoyed me. But overall, I was better off with, a, say, an XPS 13 or XPS 15. Would have been fantastic for the video edit inside. I wouldn't have had to worry about you know, the Mac not supporting HEVC or H.265, which it does now in High Sierra, but the funny thing is, it will not read the HEVC files from this phone here, but it does from the iPhone. So I don't know why that is. If anyone knows why, please let me know down there in the comments. And just thought I'd share my experience using this overseas. You know, 99% of the time is alright. I just had those little issues that are annoying and yeah, I just thought I'd share it because maybe it will help you out. If you're travelling overseas, what equipment to take with you, I definitely recommend you have something without a friggin' dongle. 100%. Um, just save yourself the pain or, you know, maybe you think I'm just an idiot and uh, oh, you should know where your dongle is. Well, alright, anyway, tell you. Catch you in the next one.